When we come right here to chapter 18, the first skin, for the first thing that we can see as we come to the scene right here, uh, Prophet Elijah come to uh, uh, King Ahab, and it starts just right then in, in verse number one. He said, "Thus says the Lord, because uh, 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 in those days, you know, uh, Ahab one, was one of the most wicked kings that uh, the kingdom has during that time." And, and therefore, God has sent him many prophets and all of that. And then come Elijah to this time. And he said, the Bible said in verse 1, It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third, in the third year. So the second time now that Elijah is coming back in, verse, in chapter 17, uh, we see that Elijah come and he said, You know what, Ahab, that says the Lord, it's not going to rain for, uh, for, 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 for many days. And um, the Bible said later on how long it was. Uh, but he said that it's not going to rain. Only that, he said, it's not going to be even dew in the morning. Nothing is going to be absolutely dry. And the Bible said that God told Elijah, you know, after this, you go to this brook. He said, I'm going to feed you there. And you're going to drink from this uh, brook right there. He said, and I, I want you to stay there, he said, until I bring you water. And the Bible says that uh, as Elijah went, and right there I uh, was in this uh, by the brooks, he says, and he drank from this brook, and every morning, uh, every, every evening, the Bible says that the ravens brought him uh, flesh, which is meat, and bread for him to eat. Think about Elijah every day, he will feed his hamburger every single day. Someone said it was the first McDonald's back then. All right. Think about how God provides for him. But the Bible says that after, the, after a, few, uh, a few months, probably, the, the brook dried up. Now Elijah was right here, probably he was thinking, what about now? But you know what? God always provides. God always is there. When God says something to someone uh, to go some, some places, God is going to be with that person that's got will for his life. At this time, that was God's will for Elijah's life. The Bible said that after that, God told Elijah, you know what, now I, I just go from here and, and I have prepared, he said, a widow woman, she is going to feed you there. And the Bible said that Elijah went and there was uh, this widow, and you know, we know the story, and uh, this widow was right there and she uh, fed him for a, uh, for a period of time as well. But after that, the Bible said, in, in, as we come to chapter 18, that, uh, as God told Elijah, now go back again. To Ahab, go back and tell him it is going to rain now. Go back again and it's going to rain again. Go back again and tell him. Now if you think about just to have the courage to go before the king and tell him all of these things. Number one, first, he says it's not going to rain and it didn't rain. Now he's going back again. Probably he was thinking in his mind and now, now what? You know, he's the king. The king has power in those times. The king probably will command him to, to be killed just right then. But he went back. He was obedient to the Lord. And he went back in chapter 18. The Bible says as he was going, uh, uh, King Ahab was sending all of his, uh, 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 his people around to find water because everything was dry at this time. And the Bible says that Elijah met with Obadiah right here. And he said, you know what? Go and tell Ahab that I'm coming to see him. Uh, 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 I'm just going to talk to him basically. Just going to tell him something. And the Bible said in verse uh, 17, as Elijah came and he met with Ahab for the second time, the Bible says in verse 17 of chapter 18, and it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Now think about his, his blaming uh, 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 Elijah. He's blaming Elijah for what is going on. He's blaming Elijah for the wickedness that he was going through. He's blaming someone else. The Bible says in verse 18, And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandment of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balin. Now think about how courageous he was just to confront the king at this time. And, and, and as he goes on the story, the Bible says that Elijah went, uh, uh, told him, you know what, just gather all Israel together. 
Just gather all of them together. As we come right here, and this is our passage in chapter 18, verse 21. The Bible says, And Elijah came unto all the people. As the people gathered together right there, as Elijah told, Bring all the people and bring all of your false prophets. Bring every, any, everybody right here, and we're going to find out who is God. We're going to find out today, not tomorrow, we're going to find out today who is the real God and all of that. In verse 21, the Bible says, Elijah came uh, uh, unto all the people and said, How long shall ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Be Baal, uh, uh, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. What do you think that the people didn't answer anything? They didn't know at that time who was the Lord, really. They didn't have any conviction about anything. And the Bible says in verse, in verse 22, Then Elijah, uh, 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 then say Elijah unto all the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophet are 450 men. Let them therefore give two bullocks. And, and, now, and now right here, they gather together these, these two, two bullocks and all of that. And he said, you know what? We're going to see who's God uh, today. In verse 30, the Bible said, And I just say unto, unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And before that, the Bible said that uh, uh, the, prophet, the false prophet right here, they tried to do everything for their God to answer by fire. But they, 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 they God, false God, of course, they didn't. In verse 30, as, as Elijah, Elijah's turn now to sacrifice before the Lord. In verse 30, the Bible says, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Verse 31. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the numbers of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the, 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 unto, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stone he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made it stretch uh, about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. Verse 33. And he put the wood in order. And he cut the bullocks in pieces and laid him in the wood and say, Fill four barrels with water and put it on the burnt sacrifice on the wood. Verse 34. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran about the altar and filled the, 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 the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. That these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stone and dust and licked up the water that was in the, in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they say, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophet of Baal, let no one of them, uh, no one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down on the brook Kishon and slew them there. I want to preach to you on the title of this message tonight. Now is your time. Now is your time. And I believe that if you and I as a church will come together tonight in Jesus' name, if we come together 
Number one, if we come together to repair the broken, number one, if to repair the broken things are in your life and in my life, but not only that, to repair the broken, but to build upon that which is repair. In other words, to continue on in our spiritual life, to go forward, as we heard this morning, uh, to build upon the repair. But not only that, but also to put things in order the same way that they put in order things right here and then to fill our life with God himself to fill our life with God's word to fill our life with Jesus this is the the the, the principle right here is to fill, when he says to fill the barrels not only one time but next another time and another time in other words that constantly you and I you, we should build uh, we should fill our life with the Lord Jesus Christ, but not only God, but the next thing is to let God be known through your life, through your life. And I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna, I, I am not, I am, I don't want to be repetition tonight, but I want to repeat, I, I want to say it again, that if you and I will come together tonight, and first of all, we repair the broken things in our life. And then we build upon that which is repair. And then we put things in order in our life. And we fill our life with Jesus. And, and, and then we let God be known through our life. I believe that God is going to use this church in a mighty way. In the way that only God could use this church. And as we see right here in verse 30, as Elijah come to the scene right here, and now he's calling all these people to gather before him. He said, come near. I want you to see what God is going to do. Don't be far away. Remember that when we come to Jesus, we have to come near to him. The Bible said, come nigh to God and he, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. And therefore, he's, he's calling the people, Get, come near here. I want you to see what God is going to do. The Bible says in verse 30, and Elijah said unto, unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. The first thing that he did, the Bible said, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken. Now think about for many years right here, the people of Israel have forgotten the God, the God who, who has provided for them for 40 years in the, in the wilderness, the God who, who provide for them, the God who loved them, the God who have the cloud upon them so that the sun will, will not burn them, uh, the God who provide manna for them every single day uh, uh, with, without ceasing. That God, they have forgotten their God. And now at this time, they are following idols they are following after other uh, after other gods and therefore god have uh, have put his face away from them and he has withhold the rain from them he has withhold the blessings that he had for them now i want you to think about if there is no water if there is no water in, in let's see if in alabama doesn't rain for uh, for three years and a half was this time if Alabama doesn't rain, things are going to be dry, right? If things are, get, are getting dry, guess what? The cows, the chickens are going to die because they won't have any, uh, 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 any food, right? Because in order to have food, you have to plant seed and to have something. And if the animals and the chickens and all of that die, guess what? You are going to die too, right? Because there won't be food for you as well. Now, right here, God is withholding the blessings uh, uh, that he has for his people, the people of Israel. So he wanted them to realize, they, he wanted to wake up, he wanted them to see that he is the only God. He wanted them to see that without him, they could do nothing. And beloved, I want to I wanna tell you that without God, there is nothing we could do, nothing, absolutely nothing. And the first thing that the, the Elijah, as he came right here, as the, all the people were gathered together, and the first thing that he did was to repair the altar of the Lord. Repair that which was broken. Repair that which was uh, rejected. Repair that which was forgotten for a long time. I want to remind you today, probably in your life, in my life, probably there are things in our life that he has been broken down. There are things in our life probably tonight that are broken down. 
We don't know what it is, but you know what it is. God knows what it is. Probably the things in your life that nobody else knows that has been broken for a long time already. And you have forgotten. And then you, you have rejected. You, you haven't come to the Lord and told him about these uh, broken things in your life. And guess what? The Lord is not going to put his blessings upon that. That is broken down. Right here the altar of the Lord is being despised. It's being forgotten. Now Elijah is trying to put together again that which was before when the people of Israel are uh, uh, really uh, in the time of, of Solomon and the time of David. They have this beautiful altar and they sacrifice daily to the Lord and they worship the Lord and they have fellowship with the Lord. Uh, and now he's preparing back again, putting together back again that which was uh, beautiful before. And beloved, that's what God wants from us. Things that are broken in our life, he wants you and I to put them back together again. Remember that time when you were saved, just the, first, the few, few weeks that you were saved? How, did you, how you didn't want to uh, wanna miss any day, any moment of your time, just reading your Bible, just walking with the Lord, just praying every day, and how sweet fellowship you, you, you had with him, and you loved him, and you were near him, and all of that. But after a period of time, guess what? Things are getting slower, slower. Now there are things broken in our life that we don't have the same communion with God. And that's what happened with the people of Israel right here. In the time of Solomon, in the time of David, guess what? They have a few beautiful fellowship with God. They were com in communion with God. They served God and all of that. But at this time, when this king was, guess what? They forgot who God was. They forgot the God who helped them. So the first thing that we can see right here uh, is that we have to repair the broken in verse 30. The Bible says in verse uh, 32, as Elijah was gathering together all the people, number one, he said, he prepared, he repaired the altar of the Lord. Number two, the Bible says in verse 32, and with a stone, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Now right here, he, first of all, he repaired the altar. This time. And now with this stone that he has that represents the 12th tribe of Israel, the Bible says that he built. I believe that he built upon the altar that he had repaired. I believe that he built this other altar upon that which he had repaired. And the second thing right here, the second thing that we have to do in our life is to build upon that which has been repaired. But first of all, we have to repair. We have to restore our fellowship with God. We have to restore uh, 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 anything that, he ha that hinders our relationship with God. In other words, not only we have to prepare, but we have to go beyond. Go beyond. Build upon. And that's the Christian life. That you, we all, remember the Bible says that we're always advancing. God is an advancing God. God is a God that is going forward all of the time. He's never staying in the same, same place. It's going forward. In other words, that you and I in our spiritual life, we should grow every day in our life. Remember the Bible says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge, he said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the desire of God. That's what God wants from you and I, that every day we grow, he said, in knowledge. No, we just start, stay there the same way that we were. Not just repair our life and just stay comf comfortable in the same place. No, beloved, we have to build upon that which is repair. We have to build upon that which is repair. But not only that, as we, as, we, as we continue right here, number one, he said he repaired the broken. Number two, he said he built upon that which was repaired. Spiritual growth, to grow, to continue mature in the things of God. In the same verse 33, the Bible says, uh, 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 um, And he put, he said, the wood in order. Verse 33, the Bible says, And he put the wood in order. 
No, no, no only Elijah, as he came to, pre, to repair the, the broken uh, altar of God, the bowels that he built upon, but not only that, but he put things in order. He put things in order. In other words, that this stone was not, not, was not too much there, and, and this uh, stone was not too much there, but everything was in order, in the exact place that they should have been, uh, they, 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 they should they, they should be, and, and everything was in order. And that's what God wants from us. We, uh, God wants from us to put things in order in our life. God is a God of order, and he likes order. And he doesn't want anything just to be from there, to be there, and to be everywhere. He wants everything to be in order and in decent. No, right here he said that he, he put things in order in verse 33, and he put the wood, he said, in order. You see right here, uh, uh, there are things probably in our life that we need to put in order. Probably you have prepared, you have, you have repaired your altar already. Probably you, have, uh, you are building upon, upon your altar, but probably you are not putting things in order in your life. God wants us to put things in order in our life. The Bible says in verse 33, uh, as we continue right here in verse 33, the, the, the next thing, the Bible says, And he cut the bullocks in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and, put, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. The next thing that we could do right here, as we come, uh, as we come and we gather together as a church, number one, we have to repair the, uh, uh, the broken things in our life. We have to build upon that which, uh, that upon which, that which is repaired. Number three, we need to put things in order. And number four, we need to fill our life with God Himself. We need to fill our life with God Himself. And the only way that we are going to, do, to fill our life with God himself is by uh, 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 being in this book, reading the God's word, praying and staying with God. That's the only way. Remember at this time, the people of Israel, they have forgotten God. They uh, were not reading uh, uh, the law in that time. In that time. They, 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 were, they were forsaking God. And therefore, God, he said, you know what? I'm going to withhold the rain. I'm going to withhold the blessings that I have for you. Now, right here, we see that we, we uh, actually, the Bible doesn't say from where did they get water. Remember, there, there was no water at all in that time. And it's just amazing, you know, how God all the time, he provides. He provides. And the Bible says that he said, you know what? Not only four barrels of water, but put it again and again and again. I want you to think about, the Bible says that the Lord God himself, he is the living waters. And he wants us to be filled of him every single day. And, and, and that's the, the, the thing that you and I, uh, uh, that's the principle right here. I believe that the principle here is to be filled with Jesus, to be filled with God constantly in our life. It's why he said, you know what, put it one time, and then he said, put it again, and then he said, put it the third time. You see, the principle right here is to be filled with God, one and, and, and another and another and again and, and so on, uh, 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 with our, in, to put him first in our life, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Of course, uh, uh, but, uh, as I said before, the Lord Jesus said that he is the living waters. And beloved, as we come, as we come tonight, as I say, as we gather ourselves, uh, as we think about this thing, what's going on in the, with the people of Israel, probably in your life, you're, be, you're, you're going through the same situation. You, you, you have broken things in your life. You are not building. You are not growing. You are not advancing in God's uh, kingdom. You're not putting things in order in your life. And probably you are not filling your life with the Lord Jesus and with God and with God himself. You're, in other words, you're not growing. But God wants us to go on for him to go on for him 
The fifth thing that we can see right here, and lastly, we can find that in verse number 36. The Bible says, And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. The last thing that, that, that we can see right here, just uh, now is your time. Remember that was the title of our message. Now is your time. Your time to do what? To let God be known through your life. Through your life. Now right here he said uh, that and the verse number 36, the last part, and that thy, uh, the Bible said, Lord of God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God, where? In Israel, he said. Let's just take Israel for that moment and just put your name right there. Put your name right there. Let it God be known through Ernesto. Let it be God known through Chase. Let it be God known through uh, uh, um, Miss Dilfer. Let it be God known through uh, uh, many right here. Let it be God known through each and every one of you. Just put your name right there. And that's what God desires from us. He desires uh, to be known through your life. Remember the Bible says that you and I are the salt of the earth. Remember that, that he said that you and I are the light of the world. He desires, he wants, he, he, that's what he desires from you and I, to be known through you. And at this time, of course, he's being known through who? Elijah. He's being known through Elijah. He's a prophet of God right here that he's doing all of these things for the Lord. And God is going to be known through him. He said, and that I am thy servant. Is why he said, because I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things at thy war. In other words, Elijah said, you know what? I have nothing to do with this. King Ahab have nothing to do with this. That's God. Everything I have, I've been telling you is coming from God. It's nothing from me. I, 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 I hope God, God never chose me. I hope probably God, he was saying, I hope I was never here. But God chose me and therefore I'm obeying him. And God is being known through my life. Through his life. What about you? Is God being known through your life? Is God being known through your life? The Bible said in verse 37, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the Lord, then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and he licked up that water that was uh, in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Now think about what's going on right here after they saw the marvelous thing, the power of God. What God could do in that moment. Guess what? The Bible says that all of them, they say, you know what? The Lord is God. The Lord is God. And that's what God wants from you and I, beloved. That when, when we put things in our life, when we, uh, 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 and now is our time to repair the broken. When we repair things in our life, we repair broken things in our life. Maybe a, any sin, any circumstance in your life. And only that, now is your time as well to build upon that which is repair. And to put things in order in your life and to fill your life with God. God, uh, and, and let God be known through your life. Guess what? People around the world, people around your community, people around you, they're going to say, you know what? The Lord is God. Because they're going to see God in your life. And that's what's going on right here. God is being known. Through his, through his prophet, through his men, the one that he is using. And as I said at the beginning, if we as a church, we come, we gather our, 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 our arms around and we come together with one purpose. 
if we come together, knowing that now is our turn. Remember before, before time, before Elijah's turn right here, there, there was the turn of all of these uh, uh, prophets of Baal, all these prophets uh, that were, were worshipping false god. There was their turn first. They were, they were the ones who were trying to sacrifice. They were the ones who were trying to cut themselves and asking their false god to f send fire from heaven and nothing happened. That was their turn before. When we came to Elijah's turn, that was his turn. You see, Elijah, he, has, he had his turn already. But it's a past. You see, now is your turn and mine. Now is your turn and mine. Now is your turn and mine to come to take our own turn. Now God has given you your turn. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Now that it's your turn, now that you know that God wants to be known through your life, now that it's your turn, what are you going to do with it? You see, for Elijah, it was easy for him probably just to run away and to be gone. And after that, we can see that, that he was gone. He didn't want to deal with it anymore. But we're not going to go there. We just look in this passage. For Elijah... His turn was this very moment to do something for God. And God has allowed you to come here tonight. God has allowed you to be alive tonight because you have your turn now. From now on, it's your turn to repair the broken. Repair broken things in your life. Any, any sin, anything that hindered your relationship with God, repair it. Put it back together. Restore it in the same way. Uh, restore it to your first love. Restore it with, in the same way that when you were saved at the beginning, as I said, that you uh, wanted to read your Bible all the time, that you wanted to pray every time, and, and that you have this sweet fellowship with God. But not only just be repairing things, but build upon. Continue to grow spiritual life. Put things in order in your life. Now is your turn to fill your life with Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And now is your turn to let God be known through your life. Let's pray.